Well, hey, how y'all doing out there today? Uh, listen, we've been talking a lot about water here lately and and even how, uh, man, we really have to start thinking about it above everything else. And, uh, well, that got me to thinking. And, I mean, I, I, know, I knew a few things, but I wanted to throw a few other things in here because um, where we can't blame all that's going on, all the changes in the earth right now, on us there is a lot that we can blame on us and in our own demise y'all we're gonna run out of water because we did it to ourselves or we allowed greedy corporations to do it to us and i'm not talking about nestle selling you water i'm not talking about that i'm talking about i'm gonna bring up three things right here that we don't need that we don't have to have and that we use so much that you are not going to believe these these statistics i'm fixing to tell you about water about clean water Drinkable, usable, potable water. All right. So as I got to looking in this, uh, I, I, me as usual, I try not to stay focused on one thing. I don't blame. I want to know the facts. So I looked at the facts. And um, the number one thing out there that we really don't need and we should pay attention to that steals our water and is disrupting our planet. Y'all ain't going to believe it. It's concrete. Of all the things in the world, you never probably not would have thought about concrete being an issue or a problem. But did you know that concrete is the second most used substance on earth behind water? Wow. So it's water and concrete and then oil. <laughs> so water and concrete. And you think, well, wow, Bill, how can we say water with concrete? I mean, it's just concrete. It ain't got anything to do with water. Well, it takes water to make concrete. Now water dries out. When it dries out, it ain't any good anymore. The chemicals in concrete are, am are amazingly toxic. It is not a good building material. Never has been, but it's the most used. Everything around you. The, the Hoover Dam, um, I believe it's like four and a half billion cubic yards of concrete which is just ungodly eight or nine tons of cubic tons of, of, of concrete. Well, each, each, each yard, just one yard of concrete, takes 30 gallons of water that's gone forever to make. We use 10 billion tons. So that would be 20 billion yards. 20 billion yards of, of concrete a year. A year. If you did the math on that, there, there's literally nine or over nine trillion gallons of water we could save just by building our new buildings. Just new buildings. Leave everything alone. Don't suck out any more sand out of the ocean. Don't erode the beaches anymore. Don't have to clean and wash that water and waste that water. And don't use water to use concrete anymore. And we'd have nine trillion gallons of clean, potable water a year to add to what we need. What we need now to live. So I'm, I'm going to keep that in there. All right, so there's concrete. Did you ever stop and think about concrete? And please research this. I, I, I wish everybody would research anything I talk about like I'm just lying to you. Just try to prove me wrong, but not prove me wrong. I want you to learn with me because learn, I learned a little bit too. All right, the number two thing, which is probably the number one consumer of water, at least in our continent, at least in North America, is cows. Today, right now, walking around us and every pinned up, the commercial livestock, the cows. I'm just going to keep it to the cows. We're not even going to talk about hogs and chickens and all the other stuff we eat. We're just going to leave it to cows, all right? There's about a little over 30 million beef cows right now, and there's about 10 million dairy cows. So that's 40 million cows. Each one of these cows has an average weight of about 2,000 pounds. Now, I wouldn't imagine what they eat. I've, I've seen cows out in the past year. I've come up around cows all my life. But I never stopped and, and put cows and water together. Did you know that it takes 600 gallons of water to make one pound? One pound of hamburger meat. So one good big fat hamburger, it took 600 gallons of water to get that. They say, Bill, that's crazy. How does it take 600 gallons of water to make it? Well, that's how much water that that cow is going to drink in its five-year lifespan um, per pound. So one cow, one 2,000-pound cow at 600, at 600 gallons a pound, that's 1.2 million gallons of water that you'll never get back that you use to, 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 to get that, that, that one cow, 40 million cows. Y'all, I think it came up to 48 trillion 
gallons of water that go to just the cows. 48 trillion gallons of water. So you can eat something and you probably ain't going to have nothing to wash it down with. Now, I'm going to make a little point about eating beef, especially commercialized cows. That's on you. Uh, I do it, and y'all do it. And uh, But beef is not um, a staple food in our diet. It is not necessary. In fact, beef causes a lot of health issues in your guts and whatnot. So maybe you could just cut down on it. So what if, what if we just stopped half of our beef usage, half of our milk usage, and we needed half the cows? We could save 24 trillion gallons of water a year on what we consume. You get that? Now, that's, that's big numbers. That's lots of zeros. That's 12 zeros uh, for a trillion. So think about that. We, we could cut that down and turn out that 48 trillion into 24 trillion just by cutting our and, – and guess what? That's not half of the beef that we raise and – uh, about a third of the milk that we produce in America don't even go to Americans. So maybe we should, every country should be taking care of itself. Just getting greedy to make a living off other people by selling them animals and meat and food and products that needs to stay local. That always should have been local. I'm sorry that the technology and the convenience of being able to take it overseas makes it seem cool. It's not. Ask the Australians who are over there giving all their beef to the Chinese. Now, a lot of them don't care for it, and it's not even their problem, and it's taking their water on the driest continent. Just here recently in Australia, you want to talk about how desperate water's getting? During their water short, shortage during their summer, which was the Northern Hemisphere's winter, uh, industry was allowed to use water where farmers couldn't even get it for their crops or the cows. So the water went to the industry anyway. And notice I ain't even brought up industry yet except for the concrete, you know, and that's, that's the build stuff. I'm not even talking about manufacturing or anything, but I will bring up industry for the, for the third one that we do not need. Okay, so we don't have to have beef in our life. We don't have to have concrete. All right, that's just people selling you things and making money off of it. So we can change those two and get back trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of gallons of clean water and preserve it and save it. That's our life. All right, well, the third one is my pet peeve. And one of the things that I want to see eradicated from the face of this planet as soon as possible. And that's fracking. Now, when I talk about fracking, you might not, not know what I'm talking about. But fracking is short for hydraulic fracturing. It's something that Halliburton came up with back in the 60s and deemed it, even Halliburton, deemed it too unsafe to use back then. But now that they found a, a way of extracting the coal seam gas from the coal, from the coal beds that they can't dig up and use for coal, uh, they found a way of fracturing it and getting the gas from it. Well, we don't use that in America either. But let me let you in on a little secret before I tell you about it. Um, we have two and a half million frack pads. So we have fracked America two and a half million times, which is sick enough. Each one of those frack pads took over two million gallons of water. Two million gallons of water to, um, to frack, just to frack it, just to fracture it, to get the gas going. And it takes about another million gallons a year of water to upkeep that. We have two and a half million wells. All right. We have uh, 1.75 million active wells. So just do the math. What's two million times two and a half million? <laughs> you see what I'm getting at? That water you never get back. Also, by stopping fracking, see, when they make it wastewater and it's completely unusable to us, they just, nowadays, we allow them by our consent, our silence, to let them re-inject it back three miles into the ground. This is causing earthquakes, and this is destroying our underground water table that the cows ain't drank, and we ain't mixed with sand to make concrete. All right. Now, the, the good thing about stopping the... Oh, and another thing is, we don't use the coal seam gas. That's for China. So we might want to think about our own area, our own lives right now. They're doing pretty well on their own because they're buying our stuff. Matter of fact, China actually has the largest coal seam bed in the world, and it's untouched. They're not fracking their land because they're fracking Australia and the United States like you wouldn't believe. So we got to think about that. It ain't being selfish. It's being realistic. It's being community. And it's also keeping better food uh, and better living and cohabitating habits, coexisting habits with our planet. Now, the, 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 the other ways that these three things are affecting our planet is I just want y'all to think about something. Where do you think the 10 billion tons of concrete comes from? It comes from sand out of the ocean. They've been sucking this, 
I, sand dredging the sand out of the ocean for decades. Look at the cities we built. We've taken the the sand from the ocean, our natural our, our natural buffer on our shelf from the ocean. From the, we're a water planet, by the way. We shouldn't be having toxic water if we're a water planet. Um, that was our natural buffer. They've taken that away. Now we see the erosions. They talk about the rising sea levels and the seas rising here, but over here the seas down. Well, no, you built these unsustainable concrete cities on top of marshlands like in Miami, like in uh, New Orleans, like New York. And sure, it seems like it's sinking. I mean, it seems like the ocean's rising, but no, the ground's sinking from the weight. You destroyed our clean water to make these cities out of this concrete. We never needed this. You could have made them out of all other kind of things. It was cheap. It was easy to sell. And they didn't tell us the truth about it. Industrial secrets are the killers of this planet, y'all. And there shouldn't be nothing secret about anything you have. You should know exactly what it is and exactly what it will do to you and the effects. But think of taking all that weight off the sea floor and putting it on top of the shelf. I think that's causing some shift. And I think I, I have no idea, but that does not seem right to me to take trillions and trillions of tons of weight off of one place in the earth and put it onto another and not and not expect something crazy to happen all right as i said with the beef cows that was also something that was kind of pushed on you that became something massive um, uh, as a food source and as a source of clothing and and um, and manufacturing industrial material uh back a long time ago but it made good money just like oil and those people have lobbied to keep their food and their energy source going. So they old money keeps new money generating. You get it? The beef thing is something that you have complete control of. The beef and milk thing. Because you're the consumer. We can't do nothing about the, the coal seam gas because we're not trying to buy it from the U.S. So we can't stop that. That's one thing we, we're going to have a hard time stopping. But now you know how much water it takes. Now you know where your clean water's going. Now you know what to do about it. Uh, the concrete thing, that would take a lot of lobbying to, um, and I hate to use that word because I don't believe in banning things. I think we should ban banning <laughs> and just everybody do the right thing. But we had to ban concrete as a substance and use something else like hemp. Have you ever heard of the hemp blocks, which is about five times stronger than concrete and about 100 times lighter? Okay, so there's things out there uh, to, to, to replace it that are better and lighter and stronger, just like aluminum and plastic. We got things that are better and lighter and stronger, and guess what? Bam, it's also hemp. But the, 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 the 48 trillion gallons of water going to the, to the beef farms and the dairy farms, you control that. You control that. What you could do is go to local small farms. You can, uh, if you have to have beef, buy from them. Keep your money in, in your community. But you don't have to eat that. Yes, it is nice to have a big fat ribeye steak or T-bone or, or some other name of a cut that they got out there. It does taste good, but that ain't necessarily good food. Uh, and it's, it's not necessary. And look at what it's doing. Would you rather have a T-bone steak, or would you rather have um, 600 gallons of water that that steak, that steak uh, weighed that it took to make that steak, that, that one-pound steak you're about to eat, which usually ain't a one-pound steak, it's about a half-pound steak. So you, would you rather have that three to 600 gallons of water, or would you rather have that piece of beef for one meal? Think about that. Because here's the other thing about it. Um, we humans... Uh, and I looked this up. Now, this is what the Internet was telling me. I do not know, use nowhere near this amount of water. But as of right now, your average American uses 80 to 100 gallons of water a day. A day. That came out uh, 33 billion times. 330 million Americans. That came out to be 33 billion um, um, gallons of water a day just uh, we use. All right. Was you really dirty before that shower? In a... Um, I lived in I lived in Australia for a little while. They preserve water. Do you gotta run the water while you're brushing your teeth? You just can't get your toothbrush wet and then cut the water off. I mean, that's your own water bill, by the way. God forbid I tell you to do or or suggest something to you that would save you some money. <laughs> you know, I guess you're so rich you can just buy this golden water coming out of the, the tap. But cut your water off when you're brushing your teeth. Um, if you got an electric hot water heater, put a light switch on it, and when you leave out in the morning, cut your hot water off. All you're doing is, is heating up water and evaporating it right out of your own system. Uh, plus, I'll say you only power bill. Um, you can collect rainwater 
to flush your toilet. You don't got to drink it. You don't got to do nothing with it. Uh, I think this is one of the reasons why they try to outlaw or 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 make it seem um, um, like you get in trouble uh, if you collect water or if you grow gardens because they want you to consume what they offer so they, so they can make money. All this <sighs> trying to be the richest some bitch in the world and make something out of nothing has really put us in a bind. So here's your way out of the bind. But all the little things you can do to save, uh, how about trying to think about the fact that don't don't try to use 80 to 100 a gallon a gallons of water a day. How, how about cut it in half? Just try to cut it in half one day. Less time in the shower. Um, don't use a dishwasher to wash dishes. Um, I mean, take a shower every other day. Listen, I want to say something about the shower. Um, what you think smelling good and looking good and all that is, that's been sold to you. We don't all think like that. That's why they got so many different kinds of soaps and shampoos and, and smell good stuff. Because that's all illusion. That, that is you being told, hey, this, this is what the man wants to smell you, wants you to smell like. Here's what the woman wants you to smell like. Believe it or not, if it's for uh, you going out on a date and, uh, and, you want, and you think your smell is going to attract a girl, well, you don't need to wear nothing at all. Because some of that, that old funky smell is is what's in. That's that's the that's the that's the, the love potion right there, <laughs> so to speak. But just on the on on a real note, if you could go days without even breaking a sweat, you can uh, your hair don't get dirty instantly. I mean, why does it always got to be clean? I'm just trying to say that it, every all your practices and everything you do, did you come up with that, or is this something that's been suggested to you? That will make you more popular or smell good. Do you even think people can smell you all the time when you go outside? Do you think they know that you got dirty underwear on? <laughs> no, only you know that. So we can even think within our own selves, within our own personal lives. We can change all of this because that's how you do what, y'all? How you do what? Live the change. You can live the change by just you alone cutting back. Your beef intake and your milk intake, as, as much as you see fit to do, as much as you want to do. You can use as little amount as water, even though we see that other things are really stealing the water. Um, next time you go to buy a home, next time you go to build something, next time you try to do anything, now you know the truth about concrete. And I hope that you go look it up because the sand wars or something, y'all, that's another money pit. That's another thing. We're, we're trying to replace the sand now on all these beaches around America. They're not even talking about this, are they? That's them people up there in New Jersey. That's the people on the, the East Coast. That's the people down in Florida, how they're trying to replace the beaches. I was just down in Florida. I saw the way the Gulf is stepping down when it used to be just one nice flat beach going out into the water. You could walk forever and still be in waist deep water. Now, now it was like big, big um, rifts missing, missing out. Hold on trenches just just you could see it and i, I never seen the, the the gulf like that so i understand i saw with my own eyes what's going on with this sand and this concrete um those three things alone in the fracking are not necessary so two of them you can help fight against that would be your battle but the other one's up to you so i just well i didn't but the truth the truth about this water crisis i just put some power into your hands the truth just put power into your hands. You do have some control. Because, listen, I know I get out here and I, I get real blatant about the truth. And, and, I, and I seem hard sometimes. But I do love the victories. I do love to learn something new to help coexist I, that, that can actually work. Not a pipe dream. Not, not if we all get together and we can change it. No, there's things we can do as individuals to change. You can change your, your thought process, number one. That will lead to your actions. You can change your actions just in your own personal life. You can cut your water intake and your food intake down, and you can help save the water for people and people after you. But knowing what's going on and not denying it, not deflecting and saying, well, you know, we needed some tariff money. to, to, to We needed some money from the Chinese. So, yeah, what's so bad about selling them some coal seam gas we ain't going to use? You don't look at the whole picture. You just think about your one little thing. Well, the thing is, you are the change, and if you live the change, we can we can probably push on a little further, y'all, and maybe maybe even have a future for our children because there is no future for our children right now. We don't even have water and food for them. So let's change that. 
And I think we can. Now, look, when people come at you about other things, too, I just want to throw this in there real quick. The sea level rising, climate, uh, global warming or climate change. Does it matter? See, people want to argue about whether or not they're right on how everything is changing in our face or why there's 28 tornadoes in a weekend or, or why there's tsunamis in four or five places uh, on the earth after one earthquake or, or just these weird things going on. They, they got good blame. They like to deflect. Well, how do you change it? How do we coexist with it? How do we learn to go with this change on our planet? Because it seems like we took all our sand out and put it on top of our, our oceans and put it on top of our land. Uh, that's going to get reclaimed somehow, y'all. We can't just keep doing stuff like that. And 10 billion tons a year of concrete and all that water gone just to have something nice to look at while you're dying of thirst. And by the way, you can only go about three days without water, so i like for you to think about that too because uh, we need to be <laughs> paying a lot of attention to this water right now. So it ain't just Nestle going out and buying springs and draining them out. It's, it's not just the industry wasting water making plastic gizmos no we we weren't told about the truth about concrete we're not told told the truth about the cows and we wasn't really told all the stats about fracking well now you know and now you know what to look at now you know that you have some power over this hey let me mention something else a little bit about the global warming the cow thing do y'all know that the cows are also the number one release of methane I get on to big, big oil. I get on to industry. I get on to the, to all the cars and all the vehicles. But our eating habits and having raised all these damn cows has caused the, the, that is one of the largest producers of methane, CO2 emissions, whatever you want to call it, on the planet. And you can't deny that. So maybe there's something there. Maybe we need to think about that. Maybe the air and the water we need can all come down to just domesticated farm animals that are really not needed. Something to think about. All right. Uh, I'm going to go get me a big old drink of water. Dog. Talking about this made me thirsty. <laughs> but I do uh, think we should share knowledge when we get it. And, of course, y'all know that. And uh, and please research uh, concrete, uh, cows, fracking, and water. And pay attention. Do what you can to do to, to live the change and be it. I love y'all. Peace. And don't live in fear.